All right. Yeah. Next we have this. Uh, just do identify some terms. Um, all right. So radius of the circle. Okay. There's a lot of different answers you could have for this. Uh, they should be a segment that starts with O or has O at one end and it has one of these other points at the other end. So you could say OM. These are segments. You could say OR. You could say OS. You could say OQ. You could say OJ not pictured. Ah, huh, where's OJ? Reminds me of the 90s. Okay. Chord. Uh, you need a segment that has endpoints on the circle. So you could say MR. That's a chord. You could say MJ. You could say JS. Uh, you could actually say MQ. There's nothing wrong with saying MQ. MQ is a little more special than a chord. Might be insulted if you call him a chord if you meet him on the street. Oh, same with RS. RS would be equally insulted. Because RS and MQ are kind of special chords. Oh, they think they're special. Because they go through the center. We're going to call them diametas. Okay. Adjacent arcs. Oh, we need arcs first. Okay, what's an arc? Um, JS is an arc. It's a tiny little arc. It's a minor arc. Those are the kind of arcs we like. It's the smallest one I think I see. Uh, adjacent to that, we need another arc that has an endpoint at J, goes this way, or an endpoint at S, goes this way. I could say MJ, I could say RJ, I could say SQR. I don't want to get too fancy. Let's just say SQ. Because you'll look at this later and go, why did he use a semicircle? Why did he use a major? We'll just see those. Semicircle, okay. This has to be an arc that has endpoints on a diameter. So M something Q or R something S. Uh, let's go R something S. Who did you expect me to do M? Oops, I said S though. Gosh, I'm trying to be smart and talk and write at the same time. All right, R, M, S goes that way. It's that one. It's different than R, Q, S. They're both semicircles. They're congruent. But if I want to say, suppose blah, blah, blah is a point on semicircle, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I, did, I made another mistake. I, I did, it looks like a segment. Oh gosh, I have a bunch more of those. Ah, give me a second, I'll fix those. Oh, you know what, I'll let you watch me fix them because I need a smaller eraser. Because I don't know why I did that. Look at all these, ah, they're like segments. Ah. If I don't get it right this time, I'll pause and I'll do this while you're not watching me. Okay, I'm gonna do it while you're not watching me. Give me a second. Wait, then I realized these aren't arcs. Radius, chord, diameter, those are all segments. I was right the first time. I just forgot what I was doing when I got down to here. Arcs are the ones where we start getting curly. Okay, so these are all fine. It's just that the arcs are supposed to do that. All right, congruent arcs. Okay, so I need, um, I need, uh, what's it called? I need uh, arcy eyebrows on these. All right, so I need two arcs that are uh, cut off by the same size angle. Well, you know what? I know these are vertical angles right here. It's really the only, it's the only central angles I see that are congruent here. So I know MR, whatever that angle is, the central angle at MR, that's this right here, is congruent to the central angle at SQ, the central angle of arc SQ. I don't know what they are, but I know they're, I sure know they're congruent because they're in the same circle and they have the same size arc. Or, yeah, they have the same size arc measure because they have the same central angle measure because of vertical angles. There's a lot of transitive kind of argument going on there. Inscribed polygon. Well, the only inscribed polygon I kind of see, that fully closed polygon, is this one. M R S J. Mrs. J. Okay. And polygons I don't put anything on top, so I can't get that wrong. Major arc. Oh yeah. Pick pick an arc that goes beyond the size of a um, of a diameter, sort of around it. So I want to say J Q R. And yes, it's an arc, so it gets a frowny. Eyebrow shape. Okay. Talk about the circumference of a circle with radius six. Okay, so the circumference formula, if we're talking about radius, we generally use two pi r. You could use pi d and find d. That's all right. So circumference here is two pi times six, which is simply 12 pi. Uh, and I'm not going to bother some, uh, making that any kind of rounded approximation. 12 pi is a perfectly good answer for that. So I'm going to leave it. Because I don't want to run out of time. All right. Uh, use a given diagram to find the measure of each angle given y t is a diameter. They kind of have to tell you sometimes if it's a diameter. Um, you'll see this a bit, and you kind of go, well, what? How? I know it's a diameter. Well, sometimes it looks like a diameter, but you're not really sure. Like w z, okay, that's not really close to a diameter, but sometimes it's hard to tell. So they just tell you that to make sure you know, oh, yeah, y t does really go through the center. That does tell me that o really is the center of the circle because it doesn't say circle o here. So that's kind of nice. Um, because if O is not the center, this could be 30 degrees and this could not be 30 degrees, but 
since O is the center, I can be sure of that. The measure of arc XY, I know would have to be 30 degrees. Okay, so I think what I'm supposed to find here is the measure of each angle. So measure of arc, I'm gonna put a little M here, I like that better. The measure of arc WX, and okay, wait a second. If this measure is 30, well then I know this measure is 30. Uh, so if this is 50, I know this is 50. So there's a couple ways to think about this. I need to know the measure of this arc. Well, that's the same as this angle. You could look at these three angles and go, oh yeah, 50, 30, this should be 180, so that better be 100. Or you could look at these three arcs, that's degrees. You could look at these three arcs and go, well, I know those three arcs, I had to add up to 180, so it's the same, kind of the same problem. So yeah, 100 degrees is the measure of that arc. Measure of angle, what, W-O-T, oh, I already filled that in. That's 50, because it's associated with that arc. And I knew the arc already. And, and you can just write, they do this a lot. They write the angle measure just kind of out here right by it. That means that's the measure of the arc that's pinned in by the closest two endpoints. Like they wouldn't put this 50 here if they meant TX. Like that would just be rude. So um, that's usually pretty easy to figure out in the, in the diagram. Measure of arc X, Y, Z. All right, X to Y to Z. Okay, that's not too bad. Oh, but I don't know what this is. Oh, but I know that one's congruent to this one. All uh, right, y to z to t, since that's a semicircle. Sorry, that's a diameter. This is a semicircle. This whole thing is 180. So guess what? That's going on. I both. I know these whole. This whole thing adds up to 180, and they're the same. So they both have to be 90. Okay. We'll make it in 15 minutes. All right. Ferris wheel has a diameter of 42 feet. How far will the rider travel during a four-minute ride if the wheel rotates? Once every 20 seconds, I need a picture. I'll pause and do that. Well, that's about as far as I can go before I start talking, I guess. Uh, oh, diameter of 42 feet. I guess I can put that in. Diameter of 42. So, you know what? Yeah, I could say this whole thing's 42, but it's kind of hard to label that. It's almost easier just to think in radius all the time and draw in radiuses, radii. That's fine. Either way, uh, how far will the rider travel during a four minute ride? So we have some rider writing along here on the outside, and they go around uh, once every 20 seconds for four minutes. Well, how far is that? Okay, once every 20 seconds is three times per minute, and we know we have four minutes. There's a lot of ways you could have done that, but I'm going to say it's 12 times around. Uh, so this is going to be 12 times the circumference. So whatever this circumference of the circle is, that writer is going to do that 12 times. So how far is that circumference? Well, the circumference is uh, 42 times pi, or 21 times 2 times pi, same thing. Well, that's easy. I'm kind of done already. So all I need to know is how far do they travel total? Well, we said 12 of those. 12 times 42 pi is, oh, my calculator isn't running. I'll pause. I haven't shown you how to use pi in the calculator, so I might as well do it this way. 12 times 42 pi. It's actually pi is the name of this entire menu of fun symbols. We use this one a lot in stats. I uh, just do that, and guess what? Calculator doesn't mind operating in pi, so we just say 504 pi. And I hope you get used to that. 504 pi. We'll just leave it. If you wanted a decimal, which I don't right now, but if I went uh, entered that same stuff and went control enter, it would give me a decimal for that. So there you have it, you decimal people that really like decimals. Sorry, I lost the page. All right, given that I'm going to find the measure of each arc, both, so really we probably should have little M's in here, measure of the arc, because again, there's arc measure and there's arc length and they're different. We've got to be careful which one we're talking about. Uh, DA and RB pass through the center O. Okay, so DA and RB are both diameters. O is, in fact, the center. You kind of have to question that if you're not sure because it's really hard to tell if it's really the center or not. All right, arc BC. Ooh, this is 5X. These are supposed to be congruent, so that's also 5x. Because I can't really deal with this right, right away, because I don't know what 5x is. I know 5x degrees is the measure of arc BC, but I can do a little better than that. I can get a real number for this, because B all the way over to R is 180, um, and this part in here is 30, so I can kind of tell, wow, these are the same, and they add it to 180, so these each have to be 75. Okay, great. And 75 is 5x. I can do this in my head. X should be 50. Whoops, that's not what it's asking what X is. It's asking what BC is. I didn't know what BC is. It's 75. I kind of don't care what X is. If you really wanted to, you could have said 5X plus 30. This is what I did in my head. Plus 5X equals 180. Solve that for X. You'll get X equals 15. Put that back in here. You'll get 75. That's fine, too. 
Uh, it was easier to look at these two equal and go, well, I know they have 180, so they must each be 75. Measure of arc AB, um, well, guess what? That's vertical to this one. So it's vertical to uh, DOR. So it's got to be congruent also. So AB is also 75. These kind of tricks, file these away. These are going to be helpful. And from R to A, well, this was 30. I'm looking at the entire clock here. This has to add up to 360. Or, ooh, this is even better. This one from D to A, or even from R to B, those are 180. So either way you look at this, this has to make 180 with 75. So this has to be 105. All kinds of tricks, all kinds of ways to get around a circle. All right, I think this is the last one. And this is by far the hardest problem. Probably shouldn't have said that. Now you're going to freak out. All right, use a given diagram to find the following length of FH and FIH. Well, I guess the good news is FH and FIH, when I add them up, kind of as a check at the end, they better add up to the circumference of the entire circle. FH is just this part right here. You know what? I'm going to start by highlighting this. Because this is the part we got to find first. By itself, this is kind of tricky. Um, well, let's talk about the whole circumference of the circle. It's not a bad thing. You don't have to do this every time, but um, conceptually, I think it will be good to talk about this. What's the circumference of this entire circle? It's 2 pi r, which here is 2 pi times 8, which is 16 pi. That's the entire circle. This purple thing over here, this is not the entire circle. It's a certain portion of the circle. It looks like it's about a third of the circle. Well, it's not exactly a third of the circle. A third of the circle would be 120 degrees. This is less than 120 degrees. It's 110 degrees. So it's some randomly annoying fraction of a circle. Well, it's randomly annoying, but we can figure out a fraction for it. It's not that bad. It's this randomly annoying fraction of a circle that's really close to a third. It's that much of, of means times, it's this fraction of the circumference. This is all from that formula that you learned back. Oh, I'm going to try to find it. Back here. It's this formula here. It's the degrees out of 360 times the circumference. But I'm talking through it conceptually. We have 110 360. It's almost like you can think of this as a clock. And there's 360 little minutes along this whole thing to go all the way around. I know that's not a real clock. I know what a real clock looks like. I'm just saying. If you can imagine 360 little tick marks like a ruler, kind of, like a circular ruler, uh, 360 all the way around. We have 110 of them here. So we have 110 out of 360 of what that whole circumference is. And that whole circumference is 16 pi. Well, you know what? Let's do this on here. We need 110 out of 360 times 16 pi. I just hit enter. Oh, is that going to work? Yeah, it is. 44 pi over 9. Perfectly. Whoa, why does that keep happening? equals 44 pi over 9, or 44 ninths pi. Did I do that right? Was that what it was, really? Yeah, 44 pi over 9. Love it. You don't like that. If you want that as a decimal, be my guest. Uh, the rest of the thing, well, it's the rest of the circle. This is 250 degrees out here, this entire thing out this way. So I can do the exact same thing, or I could actually, I could subtract, subtract this from 16 pi either way, because I know they have to add up. 250 360ths of 16 pi. Let's just change this top to 250 then. And I get, drum roll please, 100 pi over 9. Ah, on the wrong page. It's 100 pi over 9. If I'm really not sure if this adds up to 16 pi, watch this. I could go, what's 44 pi over 9 plus 100 pi over 9? Oh, good, it's 16 pi. Lovely. Okay. Great, um, that's all. I will talk at you more in class about all this circle stuff. Thanks for watching.